I'm Matthew Petty. We're listening back to a story called Listening Party, recorded live at the Orlando Public Library last December. We're going to hear a panel discussion. Randall Smith and his daughter Chelsea Smith talk with 90.7's Nicole Darden Creston about nurturing a passion for art. We have Chelsea Smith and Randall Smith to begin. And in case you can't figure that out, Chelsea Smith is an artist. There's some of her pieces right next to her. Um, at the time of the recording, they were talking about Chelsea's lifelong passion for art and her successes as an artist, including a solo art show right here at the Orlando Public Library and the doors that it opened for her. I've always known that you were an artist. Like in our home, like it's a little different than everyone else's. There, everybody puts a little line on the door frames that mark out how tall that your kid is over the years. We would measure it by how you scribbled on the wall. We could see where your scribbles were, how tall you were getting. Even as a little toddler, you were scribbled on everything. You would scribble on your brother Evan, the newspapers, the envelopes. All of the photos had you in a diaper holding a pencil or a crayon. Like it was always you with a pencil and a crayon. Yeah, that's all I remember doing as a kid, just drawing. Well, when did you first feel like, oh, you know, I'm an artist? There's been a couple of things, but I remember one of the first is when I was in college and I got to make and build my own website for artbychelsea.com. Another thing was Winter Springs. That was your first show? As an emerging artist, yeah, outdoor. Like oh, yeah. My whole life I've been going to art shows, but now I could actually be in an art show. Now I was actually doing my dream. Following that, uh, Matt Palm from the Orlando Sentinel did a artist feature about me in the newspaper. Yeah, that was big. And that was really cool. And then one, of, I feel like one of the rock star moments I had was after I'd been doing the shows a couple years after that, I was in the post artist for the Mount Door Arts Festival. That's huge. That's like number seventh nationally rated for a show. Yeah, and there's like 400 artists there, and it's all my favorite artists around the world, you know, around the world even. Yeah. And like, I was in the show, and then they picked me to be the post artist. So what that means is they take your artwork, and now it's on everything. It's on the T-shirts, it's on the posters, and you have to autograph all the posters. Yeah, it's, it's on, on the, the banners, billboards. on the street lights. I just remember. Even on billboards when you're driving. The volunteers around. were walking around with your art on their shirt. Oh, I was so proud. I was so proud of That's that. That's when I felt like, yeah. And then what happened following is like Universal Studios Islands of Adventure liked my artwork and they got in contact with me and they want my artwork inside of the theme park and Islands of Adventure. Yeah, that was impressive. I feel like the pinnacle moment was when I actually got to do at the downtown library in Orlando my first ever solo art exhibition. Yeah, I was so proud. I came in and like... All the walls, it's huge, right? So your entire inventory is covering all the walls. And, like, I walk in there, and the reception's there, and, like, I'm sitting at the back with Evan, and I'm looking at the stage, and there's, like, a backdrop with a slideshow, and there's a podium, and there's, like, all the chairs, and it's filled up with people. And Orlando Commissioner Patty Sheen was giving a keynote speak, and I was just back there. My eyes are welling up. I'm looking at, like, <laughs> Evan's over there. He's, like, we're all, like, like so excited watching you. get. And when they introduced you and you walked up, I, thought, I just remember thinking, wow. My little girl's a woman now. She's a professional artist. Like, what did it feel like, like walking up there and looking out? Like I said, it was a pinnacle of everything I've ever done. So my whole body of work was in there. And usually you're doing the fine art shows. And it's like on the tent or this. Oh, the but ten now, by ten. Yeah, a little, yeah, little yeah. tiny, like small scale where you're in your studio. But you got to see it on these big, huge walls. And it felt like it was in a museum. And it was everything I've ever done. I, when I went up there and I looked back. And then I could see, like, you, my brother, my art professors, my mentors, my friends, my family and then even people my collectors who buy my artwork i had i had a lot of like love and support then i could see everything everyone who helped me get to that point there that was the biggest attended solo exhibition in all the public downtown library of all of their exhibitions there i was so proud i was like yeah that's my daughter it's my daughter <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was really proud too actually. it led to a lot of stuff I, like afterwards like a lot of things happened just because of that one show i think one of the biggest things that happened afterwards was when i got an invitation to submit my gallery proposal for the tate gallery in london yeah i mean the curator or somebody had to have been in orlando seen seen you there took your brochure or your business card and then emailed back 
Yeah, that led from here, right? Exactly. Look at what we did before we got here. Yeah, like on the way here, I just uh, dropped off some artwork for the Bloomingdale 316 art show. Who would have thought that the library is a fine arts incubator? You know what I mean? Like, you just don't relate one to the other. But I, I was like absolutely amazed at like how many big artistic things happen because of a solo exhibit at the downtown Orlando Public Library, right? But yeah, it's been yeah. a great opportunity. All the people are really cool and they're really involved with all the arts. What do you want to do next? Where do you want to go from here? I've been doing the art circuit for a while and tents and like doing the outdoor festivals, the renaissance festivals, the conventions. I think what would be cool having the experience from the library, what that gave me, like learning how to do my gallery exhibition and receptions, is to try and do more like galleries, like upward. Are so, you like, serious? Yeah. Like, that was that exciting? Yeah. Because it's like, it's a whole new experience. It'd be a lot easier, right? Ship your artwork somewhere. Yeah. Because I, I spend a lot of time as dad unloading, setting up tents and carrying your heavy stuff. Being outside in the crazy Florida weather. <laughs> Being just out there sweaty. Yeah, yeah. This has been a lot of fun. I've loved sitting down, talking with you about this. I'm so proud of you. You know, I have a daughter that's an artist. Because of the library and this solo exhibition over the summer, I, I, I look at you differently. I see you now as like, I remember in that moment thinking, wow, my little girl and I was a, a grown-up professional artist. And it's like a coming of age event for me. And I got to see you as, you know, wow, I'm looking at a woman now. Just want to say I'm you know, really proud of you. I love you to death. I love you too, and thank you for always supporting me. Because I know the arts is very like unruly, but thank you for supporting me through like being a little girl, like drawing all over the walls, or like <laughs> putting up my tent at art festival <laughs> shows in the the rain. Like you always were there for me, so I really appreciate you. Yeah, we make a good team, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to ask you to what it was like hearing that. So, again, I feel like this is a rock star moment because it's story <laughs> court and I'm here at the library again. And it's it's nice to be here to share our story and share, everyone share each, or, our, each other's stories and everyone gets to be here. So this is like another moment for me. Does it take you back to when you were recording it? Yes, it does. Yeah. How, how much has changed since then? Well, ever since my solo exhibition here, I feel like that was the pinnacle moment, like I said, that launched my career. I was at this level, and it's taken me to the next level. And since then, it's just been growing ever since. Like I said, I was the post artist, and now I got on the Florence Biennial. I'm in Universal Studios. I'm doing gallery shows for the Tate in London. I'm getting ready, so yeah. Congratulations on that. That Thank is you. wonderful. Thank you. Randall, what was the recording experience like for you? Was there anything that surprised you about the experience or about participating in it? Yeah, for me, it was there was two moments. There was a moment where we were sitting down talking. Then there was the moment where after we talked about the the experience itself. So what I took away from is I'm sitting down across. So you're, it's very intimate. You're, you're sitting right across from someone. You're talking for 45 minutes, and you're talking just about each other. You're talking about moments, and we don't do that. We don't do that at Thanksgiving. We, we talk about events around our lives. We, we don't spend dedicated 45 minutes talking exclusively about an experience or our shared experience, or, or and you have 45 minutes. So you have a long time to speak at length and breadth and depth about moments and experiences and for me it was there was a lot of takeaway for wow I, 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 I can tell stories and afterwards my daughter was saying wow I, I, I don't remember that story when I was a kid or my experience the listening to that story when I was a kid is now different because I'm listening to it as an adult so I uh, it was it meant a lot to me. I am a NPR and a StoryCorps freak, so like we grew up around that. So that was kind of a big deal. We get the call and he's like, "Dad, guess what? We're gonna be a thing." And I'm like, you know, my head explodes. Like, <laughs> I know it's really good for her, but I'm like, that was the moment for me. I'm like, this is so cool. We're gonna be on whatever, you know. <laughs> so I think the takeaway for me was the experience in the moment. Really, it changed our lives. Like we spend a lot of time now talking at length, you know. And I know like. 
one of the big things is my mom's from Northern Ireland. She lived through the trouble. She lived through World War II. And my, I, my daughter's spending time talking to her to say, I spend time now to sit down alone and at breath and talk about those experiences. And you realize that we started doing that with my son. I started doing that with my sister. And I started like having real in-depth conversations with no distractions. And we're not talking about the weather anymore. And that's... I realize that that's brought real value into our lives outside of just the experience between me and my daughter because it, it carried over into our whole life. So that's my takeaway. They should really stop cutting onions in the next room because <laughs> that's, that is an, um, that's a wonderful story. And at the, at the heart of StoryCorps is that kind of sharing in between generations and what amazing stories your mother must have right. as well. Um, and I do want to add, that was about five minutes of the 45-minute conversation between the two of them. And I got to edit that one. And um, there were a lot of fantastic stories that, that I wasn't able to put in there because 40 minutes versus five minutes. And we got to hear about some of your stories, Randall, as a musician. And we got to hear, um, Chelsea, some fascinating stories that that made me laugh a lot i really enjoyed the stories about your celebrity pet sketches um can you share with us a couple of the celebrities that you have done pet sketches for yes so i have a list some of them most of them i've done president obama's pet i've done the goo goo dolls johnny mar from the smith drain duran adam ant now, these are people that you have gotten to meet and yes. give the sketches to. Yes. And that, I, I understand that there was a, a fabulous photo of you and Boy George. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that, too, that's probably one of my favorites, obviously, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there was some involvement with Oprah. Can you bring us up to speed so on that? It was kind of, that was another full circle moment for me. So the pet, celebrity pet sketches, I started when I was 12 years old. So that's how I got into the art world and took it seriously. That was my first show. I would do hyper-realistic pet portraits and then raise the money for pet rescue. So it was a way for me to like share my artwork but make a difference. So at 12 years old, my teens, even up until now. Um, so the Adamant thing, he's obviously one of my favorites too. Um, he, I got in contact because they, some of these celebrities have foundations and they want to help pet rescue as well. But so I got to do his pet portrait, I got to give it to him person, and it was like amazing experience in itself, as you can imagine. And then um, a couple months later, I go on the Oprah show, Kron, and he's hanging my artwork in the back. <gasps> that is very cool. So he has, <laughs> yeah. So it was like. A whole nother thing for me, yeah. That that mm -hmm. is a wonderful story. See the different types of stories that we get to share <laughs> in StoryCorps, and all forty-five minutes will be available here. By the way, because I I feel like that's up, and I'm sure that Matt shares this sentiment. I wouldn't be doing your story justice if just those five minutes would be would be all that is shared. All that beautiful, rich story is out there in the StoryCorps exhibit. Thank you very much for recording, and thank you for sharing your thank thoughts, you. Chelsea and Randall. I, I love the five minutes you picked. That was my favorite five minutes. So you did a great job editing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That that means a lot coming from you. It really does. To be entrusted with someone's story is a very big deal, and I take that very seriously. So thank you. Thank you very much. 90.7's host of All Things Considered and the StoryCorps Orlando podcast, Nicole Darden Creston, talking with Randall Smith and Chelsea Smith. And that conversation was recorded live at a StoryCorps listening event at the Orlando Public Library last December. More conversations from that event when we come back. Mm -hmm.